thought we were getting somewhere that you put that. And welcome to A Reason to Talk with Chris Reason. Today is a tribute episode for Bray the Fiend Wyatt Rotunda. That's not his real name. Anyways. Ooh, nice. 100, 100 dice. Um, before we get into today's episode, I am here with the lovely TVW World Champion, Joe, the Demon Slayer Hero. I, I am here, and I had sex with every single one of your mothers. That's why I am your father. And I'm here with Cabbage Rodney Anger... Uh, I'm here with Rodney Bajengas Cabbage... Uh, injured Archangel Hawkins. <laughs> Hi, hello. I'm just, I'm flabber. So, so you're flabbergasted. I, I am actually. Or I think he just said he's flabby. Oh, I can see that too. So you're the progenitor of the entire human race, pretty much, yeah. Mr. Uh, Demon Slayer over there. Yeah. You've had sex with everyone's mother, so you're everyone's I, I father. I do what I want. No, just everyone on the podcast that's listening to the podcast. Oh, the, I was the entire say, world was, doesn't li- listen to this podcast. You, you owe me a lot of birthday gifts. Did. We now have a billion live streams. You know what? I, I reject what I said because I believe my brother and my mother both listen to this podcast. So. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> that'll so that'll I, make things I, interesting. Oh, God. Anyways, before we get into this episode, let's book the sponsor here. For nostalgic memories, a book of dreams and nightmares as poems, written by yours truly, now available on Amazon uh, for fourteen ninety nine and paperback ninety nine on Amazon Kindle. Uh, unless you have Kindle Unlimited, I believe it is free at the moment. That is nostalgic memories, a book of dreams and nightmares as poems. Uh, if you like the dark poetry, anything like that, check it out today. Fourteen ninety nine, get your copy today. Nostalgic memories, a book of dreams. And nightmares as poems. So, so your book is paying my uh, my paycheck for this one. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Buy this book. Buy the book. <laughs> Buy the book. Um, you guys each get two dollars. Uh, anyways. Dude, I can go to Disneyland now. Woohoo! And maybe in Mexico. <laughs> um, they're not gonna know the difference. It's money. They're not gonna care. I mean, because of pesos are like. Uh, one, what is it, one peso is like a nickel here? Something like that, yeah. Something like, I don't know this. Um, starting this off by saying, rest in peace, Bray Wyatt, also Terry Funk, who died a day before him. Um, we're here to talk, him, like, we're here to talk about him. We're here to, uh, the parts we love, the parts that we find weird, but still love, and the one part we hate, uh, which is actually trying to true. I'm just going to start off the bat by saying that Hell in a Cell match with him and Seth Rollins. All red. I fucking hated that. That was the worst. That's probably the only thing I hated besides his character as Husky Harris. Um, but Barry White, great athlete for what he can do. Great storyteller and all that stuff. Uh, Cabbage, what's your favorite match? You, wait, you, you didn't like seeing Husky Harris flying around big man in tights? You didn't like seeing that? I wasn't a big fan of the Nexus at the time. <laughs> it, no, I, I um, agree with you there. Um, I actually, around that part time, I stopped watching wrestling. See, that's what, that's, ironically, that's when I started back up to watching wrestling. Like, I stopped around uh, Jeff Hardy being WWE champion. That's around, like, when I stopped watching. Was that, like, 2012 or something like that? It was early, yeah, early 2000. And then when Nexus came along, I'm like, huh, people who don't give a shit about shit. Yeah. Which, uh, that being said, with that whole uh, thing that happened with that, I also thought it was hilarious that Daniel Bryan got fired uh, for doing what he was told. Um, But also not doing what he was told. Because he went to go, he choked Justin Roberts with his own tie. Yeah. And they thought that it was too far. Even though they were told to do whatever they want and go destroy the arena, like you're there to destroy the place. Yeah, they they were literally told to just wreak mm-hmm. havoc, but he touched one. Like they were they throwing went, the that, camera he, equipment yeah, around. They thought, were throwing they the cameraman around. They literally thought that was the uh, the bad thing. Was the worst thing of that. Because didn't they beat the shit out of like some of the people too? Yeah, it was. Uh, Cena was out there. No, I'm, I'm talking about, like, didn't they beat up some of the cameramen and shit, too? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they like, beat up everybody. They beat up the ref, they kicked the crap they out of the cameramen. The they did whatever. But 
heaven forbid Justin Roberts get a little too out of breath. It, it, it wasn't because of him either. It was literally they thought that was just bad. I call babies. I call bullshit. And then they pushed the story later on to where they, when they fought the Nexus, they brought Daniel Bryan back. Which, ironically, I watched that when I first saw that, and I'm like, who is that again? <laughs> That the was, American uh, Dragon. First time in a long time that WWE actually uh, surprised me was when they brought Daniel Bryan back for the Survivor Series team because it was supposed to be the Miz. They made it out to be that it was the Miz that was going to be on that team. Yeah, they didn't do a lesson yeah. change. Wasn't it because the Miz had a bitch fit about something or something? No, it's because the the Miz... Uh, or didn't um, he have a match or something? The Miz was like, well, I could do it. I could do it, and then they were like, "No, we got Daniel. Bryan. <laughs> we got a better, better person in mind." And it started the feud between Daniel Bryan and the Miz. Ever since, like that's like the where they started like freaking out at each other on that talking smack or whatever. Yeah, where he's like, "If you want to go wrestle in the Indies, go wrestle in the Indies." What do you do? He went to wrestle in the Indies. <laughs> um, but back to Bray. Um, what was your favorite match? Um, I don't. It was an episode of Raw. And like I, I've, I know I've talked to you about this ad nauseum, but it was an episode of Monday Night Raw. It was Bray Wyatt teaming up with Roman Reigns to fight. I think Sheamus was one of the people, and it was one other person. And the way they ended the match was it was it was so synchronized and so choreographed so beautifully that Bray Wyatt hit Sister Abigail in the opposing corner. And as soon as he hit the move, he went for the pin. He signaled, uh, you know, Roman Reigns and the other, uh, whoever it was, they did the traditional, you know, go in the ring and stop the pin. And he signaled to Roman Reigns to hit the spear. And he just, like, pointed. He basically, like, triggered it. And yeah, Roman Reigns just went, right, boom. Yeah, right after the sister, I don't remember that. And Bray Wyatt just, like, hit him. He hits him. They win the match. And yeah. it was just. Yeah he, ti- yeah, he timed that so perfectly, to, like, for Roman to go for the spear. Sure. And I'm like, that's pretty cool because he wasn't even looking. He just goes. Phew. Yeah, he he was he was facing like, I think one of the he he was just looking off and he's just like, Toosh. and it was it was beautiful. Yeah, um, I'm definitely gonna have to say that mine uh, was the I forgot what I, I had now. I did love the hit, him against Cena and the whole. Um, WrestleMania with the Firefly Funhouse. That was probably my favorite because I love that work and that made him creepy, made the fiend creepy, made scenarios that you'd never thought you'd see, like the um, Cena in the NWO and shit like that. And I just thought that worked. Um, or even bringing back the old tights that he wore. Uh, that was <laughs> yeah. funny. Um, with the, with the, the current hair, that was fucking weird. Uh, I Cena. thought it looked funny as hell. Well, Cena's fucking weird anyways right now with his hairstyle and the balding. I was going to say, that's because he's going bald, man. Um, you can see it in the back of his head. Yeah. It's kind of sad. No, really. It's called We're Getting Fucking Old. Um, yeah. Dude, I am 27. You leave me the fuck alone. Dude, you are older than my ex. Right, I'm, anyway. I, I, no, I'm 27 and I already got grays. Yeah, and you're buckle. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. That made no sense. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm I, I take that one back. This conversation. Um... But yeah, I love that the whole got the whole world in his hands with this, that around the time when he was doing that too. That was great. Um, and the whole crowd singing it that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, Joe, what was yours? Mine is the Hell in the Cell match with Roman Reigns. Uh, apparently, we all just like Bray Wyatt going against the biggest names. <laughs> the business. biggest names. But yeah, it, that's two of the three, uh, two thirds of the shield. I mentioned stuff at all before. Okay, I didn't say I liked it, but <laughs> but anyways, did he ever compete against Dean Ambrose in a, a pay per view yeah, singles I'm match? Sure he's he got probably had to have. Yeah, uh, we haven't. I can't think of anything off. The top no, of I head. I can't I can't. If he did, all I can think of is just weekly programs, not any pay per view matches. Wait, was it? Didn't the Wyatt family fight the Shield? Yeah, yeah, they, they the had Wyatt a family had a feud with a uh, Shield. Um, yeah, because they did like a table TLC something. I could have swore unless that was somebody else. No, man, no, I, I, 
Actually, I don't know if they did go against the Shield. But I know there was an there was an episode of Raw where they had a. I think they started the rivalry. Yeah. Because there was a big promo. It was like the opening of the episode. It was a gigantic promo with the Wyatt family and the Shield, and they were just going the the standard back and forth. Yeah. But um. You said Hell in a Cell? The, yeah, the Hell in a Cell where it was Bray Wyatt against Roman Reigns. Um, it, it's the first time I saw a Roman Reigns match, and I was like, wow, he's actually really good. Um, Bray Wyatt's storytelling in that, uh, I mean, that that's all, all uh, Bray Wyatt was. I'm not sure how well he could wrestle, like Matt wrestle, catch his catch can, and whatever he can do, because... Um, Physically, the moves that he can do, like the spider walking, yeah, that that, that is a for a man huge. his size to do that, like, I mean, he's not that big. I, I, I mean, me and him are, we're probably the same size, and I was like, yeah, I need to try doing that. And it took me a while to actually get that going, and um, to be able to spider walk like that. But he. That was just part of his character, and he would do it midway through a match, mm-hmm. at the end of the match. So, um, and he the, should be tired, but it, no, he decides to, to spider walk. Yeah, yeah, decides to spider walk and just creep everyone out. And um, absolutely love it. Like I'm a big horror yeah. fan, and so a character like that is it really works. nice to see in wrestling. Like sometimes you see it in wrestling, and it's just like, no, it's dumb. Uh, I can't think of it. Like like seven, f- when Dustin Rhodes did it. I mean, Boogeyman. I love Boogeyman, and same with Papa Shango. See, here's the thing though. With seven and WCW, that wasn't. It was a horror type gimmick, but Dustin he was Rhodes, peeping in on kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's why it was creepier than fuck. You're like you're a pedophile. You're not a horror. And then Dustin Ruddles or Rhodes, whatever. Um. I, I think he was sick of gimmicks because he went from doing gold dust. Yeah. And then he's like, all right, I'm back in WCW. I can be my normal self again. Well, I think that was, um, I, I think that was part of the character because the whole production for Seven, um, that that was big. I mean, he floated to the ring. Yeah. So the, I, I don't think they wanted to do that every single time he came to the ring. I Honestly, I don't know. I don't know what happened with Seven. He was he wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. W- wasn't he known as um? What was his name in TNA? Black Rain, African American Rain. Yeah, no. something, something like, like that. that. It was yeah. like a silver and uh, black uh, version of Gold Dust. Yeah. And that was when he was heavy into, I believe, drugs and alcohol because he sure. gained, he gained weight, um, like compared to his normal. Original days as Goldust, or even now as Dustin Rhodes, he he was a lot heavier. I was gonna say he looks amazing right now. Um, and I I don't even know what kind of gimmick that was supposed to be because it was supposed to be like him and like Abyss were fighting and shit like that. But then I don't know. Like Bray Wyatt is one of the great gimmicks for that. Like you had the Spider Walk, and then you had him do the his creation with the Fiend and stuff like that. Okay, so Bray Wyatt um, as the spider walk with the horror gimmick worked really well. Um, and then him taking it almost to another level with when he came back as the Fiend with a, uh, with the two different personalities with the Firefly Funhouse mm-hmm. and then turning it into the Fiend. It's a great horror gimmick. Hell, he, he's uh, Undertaker in that yeah. sense. was uh, Not towards the end, really, but like in the beginning... Undertaker was definitely uh, almost like a horror gimmick. Mm-hmm. Um, and Bray did that very, very well. The random um, uh, match he had, I believe it was with Randy Orton, where they put, like, the the projection onto the ring. Yeah, that was at a WrestleMania. Um, was it when it, his face was just projected onto the, 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 the floor of the... No, the man of the ring? Yeah. I, I don't was know it his face? face? I know there was like maggots at one point or something. It, like it that. was something. I remember that happening, but I thought it was like his face or something. Yeah. And it just freaked Randy Orton the fuck out. Um, which I get. Um, 
I was actually in the crowd for that that match, and we had no idea what the hell was going on. Oh my god, that must have been one hell of an experience. We had no clue. Well, that was would have been amazing. Um, but yeah, um, there's a lot that he's done. I never really liked his gimmick as Husky Harris. He was just another dude. Sure. But then again, I don't think he really showed anything off that he could do. No, that's. I think that's when WWE was in 100% control of his character, or else who would name themselves Husky? <laughs> Good choice. Good question. Sounds like you're naming yourself after your dog. I'm about to say that. Like, fuck it. I'll be my dog. Um, um, is it bad, though, that I... I don't know why, but the, the Sister Abigail maneuver itself, the whole spider walk into it... Oh, like the, the setup for it? Yeah, yeah I... I don't know why, but I always thought it was creepier before he became the fiend when he did it. Oh, hundred percent. For some yeah. reason, like the mask because, because made it creepy, but like before the fiend, when it was just the Wyatt family, when he did it, then it was so much freakier. Hundred percent, because you also had the fact that it was newer. Oh yeah. You expected him to do that as the fiend, it, it, and you didn't think it was gonna be scary because one, you're like, eh, he does this all the time. <laughs> um, that move. Um, I can't remember the name of the move without the gimmick name of Sister Abigail. Because uh, I have no Jay idea. Caucasian, um, Jay White, does it too, and I th- think they named it after his nickname, the Switchblade? I don't even remember. Yes, I, I believe that's what it's called. Um, He does it, and then someone else does it. Do you remember the actual name of that move, though? No. I, yeah, I, I, I was thinking so. STO, but that's um, the other direction. Um, it's almost like a flatliner, or like a spinning flatliner. But, like, Braze is, to this day, and probably will be for a long-ass time, the best uh, version of it that I've seen someone do it. Yeah. Um, the whole way he spins gets the person to go with him in the motion. Fucking fantastic. Um, the Sister Abigail part of it, where he does the spider walk, even puts it over even more, like, ah, you're fucking done. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you, you see finishers nowadays, you're like, yeah, cool. So what, John Cena hit the AA? Mm-hmm. Uh, but then again, you've seen that for how many fucking years, too? Um, but you, you know when certain people hit certain moves, like, especially with that, you never really saw many people. Yeah, it's more of a, it's, it really is a protected move. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, I, I can't remember anybody really kicking out of right. that Right. Um, that being said, when they had him do the Mandible Claw, uh huh. It was a hell of a lot different than the Mankind version. Mankind almost just looked like you just put his hand in your head off. Yeah. You didn't even try like uh, pulling on like your jaw or what. But the... Mankind did squeal with it. Yes, which kind of helped. Yeah. Oh, uh, like actually more than kind of. He was trying to be a creepy dentist. Let me see what's going on in your teeth now. Yeah, he's trying to be uh, Kane's gimmick before Kane <laughs> and before um, uh, uh, Diesel Two or Fake Diesel. Do you know who originated that move? The mandible, uh, the claw? mandible claw. No, Sam Shepard. He was. Uh, have you guys ever seen the movie The Fugitive? Yes. He, it's bits he and was pieces, the movie yeah. that he was the guy that that movie was based off of. He got cleared of not because he didn't kill his wife, but uh, like he got cleared of that, and then he became a professional wrestler, <laughs> and. Uh, his gimmick was a psychotic killer because everybody assumed he did it. Yeah. And then he used the, his finisher was a mandible claw. Hmm. Might so as well he, make something good out of it if people think you're it, a psychopath. It, exactly. No, is that like... I'm assuming was it like the, <laughs> the Mankind version? Yeah. Oh, okay. That makes more sense then. But like, um, it, it the squeal helped him put his arm there, but then like the way Bray did it where he... Push you to the ground. Yeah. And that, kind actually. of with the force to make it look better. Yeah. Um, the only thing I thought was weird was making it a pin and sometimes and not like a submission or like a knockout. Um, which I get because it's like some of those submissions where you're like, oh, the person passed out. He's not getting it back up. Yeah. Um, so turning it into a pin, I mean, it, it's nice. It makes makes sense. With the knockout part, part yeah. yeah. Or the pass out part. Which that part makes sense, but I thought it was different. And I'm like, but he did a very fucking good job at it. Yeah, he absolutely um, did. In my opinion, though, did he need that move? No, no. Sister Abigail worked. Um, 
But I, I think that's more of a way to separate himself from the different gimmick. The from different the fiend from Bray Wyatt? Yeah. yeah. I get that. Um, and then there was also one thing for that is that his senton, his running senton. Yeah. One of the best. Um, or even the best. I've seen, like, Chris Hero does, does it. Mm-hmm. His ain't bad. Akira Tozawa, for him being a smaller person and doing, like, the whole full force of, like, jumping straight up in the air to do it. Or even the diving senton that he does. Uh, Samoa Joe does that, too. Yes, he does uh, a good yeah, one. Yeah, he does it really well. Um, the Yeah, I mean, it really doesn't... Um, it, it really... I don't even know. <laughs> he could get <laughs> it, height, it, I'll say that well, much. Well, yeah, but he, he got height. Jump, so he like just leaps into it almost. I know. It's... What I well, yeah, what I wanted to say was his move set wasn't as extensive as like a Daniel Bryan or or a Kurt Angle, or like it, a, like a technical wrestler almost. But what he did, he did very well. Yeah, he was a ring, great so, fucking storyteller, yeah. and he used it. Yeah. Um, nobody ever said the whole five moves of doom stuff with him because of that. Um, yeah. um, he's not not only that like. One one thing he always did too was, if the crowd made a noise, or the crowd I, I recognized or acknowledged something that was going on, he always like gave them a he, nod. Right, or, he, he would like, yep. Like at his WrestleMania match with John Cena, when the crowd just starts singing, he's got the whole world in his hands. He just like, he just steps away from John Cena tur- and just turns to the crowd and starts dancing. It's good stuff and when the when he was a feed fiend and like during his mer- first match with Finn Balor mm-hmm. like uh he gets in the corner and the crowd uh like either says yowie zowie or something like right. I, I remember him stopping for a bit like right before he does a move and just turns to the crowd and looks at them and acknowledges that they are getting his character it, it's like it's little nuances like that that uh, shows that he really understands the business and really understands why he's there and doing the moves. And along with that, he w- uh, the interactions I see with the fans, like where he um, shows up to the building and the fans are there and he goes and takes pictures with the kids. And uh, no matter how the fans treat him, or like, hey, take a picture with my kid, kid pick him up or whatever, that... He he was always very kind with the fans and mm-hmm. there was there was a video I saw yeah. that where he there uh, some fans were standing behind the barricade when he showed up and he goes okay he just move, he just opens the barricade yeah. and like <laughs> unhooks the barricade he's like yeah sure let's get some pictures right <laughs> yeah exactly it, like it, it, like he takes time for the fans which not all the wrestlers do and no. especially when he's this big monster of a man and oh just, god yeah. Uh, yeah, like, but the funny thing is, you would never guess it because in the Wyatt family, he's the small one. Oh yeah, yeah, he's yeah. he's the because, smallest because guy. Luke, Luke Harper, Brody Lee, and Eric Rowan or Eric Redbeard were like what six nine? Yeah, like, Brian, they, they were huge. Strowman, uh, was, is that tall too? Like yeah. everybody in that group is just huge. And then they brought Randy Orton in, who's another very tall guy. <laughs> and, and Bray Wyatt's, uh, what is he, 6'3"? And, yeah. uh, and in the land of giants, yeah. he just looks small. But. Yeah, they, they dwarfed him. But. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty interesting. That also brings up, um, like, my, my For You page on TikTok, all I've been seeing are, like, in honor of and, like, tribute tattoos mm-hmm. for Bray Wyatt. And one of the ones I saw was... um. It was like the two gloves, and one of them said "hurt" and "heal." And yeah. it was a—I I think it was a the one of the quotes that he did from his last like little in-ring promo. Uh, yeah, and it said, um, "and I'm paraphrasing here." It says something along the lines of "I am the red in a world full of black and white." Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I just thought that was absolutely amazing. That 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 w- was during one of his earlier promos. He said that in, we're in uh, um, he said in a world full of black and white, I am the red. I thought it was absolutely and that, that that line right there is. Let, let's just start talking about the promos because he, he's, he's that's what made him a great storyteller too. Besides doing the the acknowledging of the crowd, the whole yep. scary spider walk, the the sister Abigail into the sister Abigail. Um, his promos are great. Even 
when he started doing the horror movie version of Mr. Rogers. Yeah. I was like, what is going on? And then I'm like watching this. I'm like, okay, this is good. This is creepy. This is entertaining, first of all. And you're just like, I can keep watching this. Yeah. Um, when, when he started doing that, my I remember my brother calls me. And it's just like, dude, you need to see this. You need to watch these promos that Bray Wyatt's doing. And at that time, I was working way yeah. too much. And um, when he called me, he said, there's a YouTube video with them all on there. Like, you... It's like a half an hour video. Just watch that. And I remember watching that and then trying to go to bed and then wait, <laughs> getting back up and watching it again because uh, he captured my attention and it, just watching it over and over again. It, it was, he, he can do that. I mean, when he came back with the Uncle Howdy mask. Yeah. And he, when he, he just came back and that it was a minute 50, I believe. After the pay per view was over, I can't t- tell you the number of times I just watched that over and over again. It 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 was awesome and it g- gave me goosebumps. It, like that's 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 the awesome thing too. Like we know, yeah. we know Uncle Howdy's Bo Dallas. Um, Wait, what? You're, I'm sorry, it's actually me. Um, I had no idea. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like. Uh, my question is: Is Bo Dallas gonna do a background? Not a question, but like a background with that because it fit him doing Uncle Howdy. It worked. Fit the character with Bray Wyatt in the feet. Like yeah. I didn't expect it because yeah, I'm so I'm so thinking Bo Dallas playing the believe gimmick. Oh All yeah. All you gotta do is believe. And then the funnier part about that too is that <laughs> he got pushed so far down the mid card. Um, from being NXT champion. Yeah. And the fact that, granted, a lot of it was probably because the, uh, Vince was in creative control or more power in there. Wait, Bo Dallas? Yeah. yeah. Bo, Bo he Dallas was NXT what, champion. Yeah, oh, he, uh, he yeah, was Pop, NXT champion, champion for a long time. Yeah, Pop wow. beat him. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, or Adrian Neville at the time. Um, for the championship, I believe. Uh, and then Neville had it for a while, and then I, f- I, I, I think... That was that before or after the Sami Zayn reign? I can't remember who was. It doing. was before. Well, no, I'm trying to remember if, who beat Pac. Was it Sami Zayn? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay, that's and what then, I was thinking. And then Kevin Owens beat him like yeah. right away. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like uh, you had him being that, and then you had him be so far down the mid card, and I'm all, all I'm thinking is the B team, the Social Outcast, the Bully crap. Um. And I'm like, him is Uncle Howdy? Mm. Like, he has that range to do it? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, Uncle Howdy hasn't really done much because he didn't get to see much. But yeah, I'm still like, all right, let's give it a shot. This actually ain't bad. Yeah. Uh, and then I really was thinking at one point that I'm like, I kind of wish they did that. Uh, like, um, someone was mentioning before he passed to do another Bray, or another Wyatt family. With, like, Alexa Bliss, bring her back in. Um, okay. Oh, with uh, Wyatt Six? Yeah. And then, the, like, something like that. The, there are so many rumors and ideas going out there for those. And in all reality, I don't think anybody but Bray knew yeah. 100% what was going on or or what was... And the weird part is, we'll never know. Oh, yeah. Like, and that's that's the very sad part. And back to what you're saying about the tattoos and memorial one, there was that um, the video and like image I, I think I showed you, yeah, where like everybody's getting the Firefly logo, which I I want that now. I'm <laughs> I'm definitely gonna get that at some point. Um, I yeah. even have a spot picked out for mine if I if I get it. Forehead. Yes. Okay. No. Your left cheek. Not your butt cheek, your left face cheek. <laughs> I was gonna do the left knee. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> nah, I, I got a spot right behind my like my right shoulder blade back there. I was gonna put it right there. I was thinking about like the inside of my like right bicep area. Like right, right there, here. Kind of. Cool. Um, but anyways, that that there's so much immemorial stuff. I I saw a lot more when he passed. Um, stuff on my for you page on TikTok and Facebook and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I mean, I'm still getting here and there. Like, I saw that same uh, quote. Yeah. And I'm just like, God. And then that being <clears> said, <throat> the tribute show, um, you had Rey Mysterio doing two moves of his. Yeah. He did the, I believe, that cross body that he would do. That that cross body. For a big man doing one across body that wasn't just, let me jump in the air mm-hmm. and see if you can do it. And he just does the full force of, like, running. Or even the, uh, the one where he would do it where, like, they're running from behind and he quickly turns around into it. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and just perfected by him. But then you also had Ray do the senton, which Ray doing a, a running senton like Bray Wyatt was kind of weird. Yeah. But I get what he was doing. Um, and then besides that, you had so many people mention Colts in it. Mm-hmm. And L.A. Knight even did that one where he's like, run. Yeah. Um, and I believe, I think one of you guys mentioned this or when we weren't doing this, but wasn't L.A. Knight the last match he had? Yeah, was the pitch L.A. Black Knight match was the last... the last match he had. Yep. And for him, for L.A. Knight to pay tribute, it's really cool. Oh yeah, and like almost like the honorable thing to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that I mean, that's got to be tough to carry with you that you were somebody's last match. Oh God, yeah. That, I mean, that's gonna live in the back of your head who, forever. Who was it too that said like? Uh, um, I can't even think of two, any rules. Two people, two people has had their last. He's had two people's last match. Like, it's memorable. And yeah, yeah. I know that's like really struggling too because that's like. Um, I gotta look this up. But, like, um, who's the other one I'm thinking? The last matches with. I'm probably not gonna find it. No, it's Two, probably. <laughs> but, um. It's too far back in the annals of history. My, like, Goldust and Bri- uh, was Brian Pillman's last match. Oh, oh. Yeah. was he really? Yeah. I did not know that. Um. Who. Eddie, I'm going to find out Eddie Guerrero. I wanted to know. You'll never find it. Russell Last. Oh, really? I forgot about that. So, Ken Anderson. Oh, yeah. Ken Anderson, yeah. Uh, fought um, Eddie Guerrero last. Um, I don't remember who Owen Hart was going to fight when he passed. Owen Hart was supposed to fight the Godfather for the Intercontinental kind of Belt. Oh, and that's where he, uh, at, um, I can't remember the name of the paper. No Way Out. No Way Out. And that's when he was did it? the whole... Oh, I thought it was over the top. No. Or over the edge. Oh, it may, it may have been, but... Either way. Yeah. Um, and then, I don't remember who he fought last before that, but it was just like, oh, God. Like, and then, um, I want to know how Godfather felt about that, too. Yeah. Um, just making his way out to the ring, and that, that happens. Yeah, it's... Yeah, got to be rough, and then Jeff Jarrett having to go out there after. Yeah, him and Deborah were just weeping in the back and like <laughs> go out and wrestle. Yeah, a lot of people were pissed at uh, Vince for that too, because they're like, "We're gonna keep the show going." <laughs> um, but no, besides in this that, crime scene, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, and then um, L.A. Knight. There was somebody else that paraphrased him. Yeah. I can't there were so many. I think it was Montez Ford. No, not Montez Ford. Big uh, man Dawkins? Who? Dawkins, maybe? Angela Dawkins? I don't remember. Um, but they mentioned like him, too. And I'm like, that was just random for them to quote him. Not really random because it was a tribute show, but like, yeah, I just don't see him quoting him, you know? No, but see, that's what I like to see is that like, a lot of, you know, the casual fans, they think that everything you see on screen is, you know, what happens. Yeah. Not a lot of people like, think about the fact that Sure, there are a lot of legitimate backstage beefs between superstars that yeah. happens, but a lot of the time they all care about each other. Yeah, oh, like, I mean, they're, it's they're, a they're family, family. Like, and not a lot of people, you know, look deep enough to see that fact. They just see what happens on screen. They're like, "Oh, these people hate each other." No, they were probably best friends, and you'd never know. Yeah, that's like um, when we were talking about. Uh, we mentioned this outside of here, but like I, I've read, like people were pissed about how they treated Terry Funk because he died the day before and they didn't really do anything besides show him on the screen and do like a slight um, tribute I believe um, and they did more for Bray and like I remember you saying about how like how yeah uh, like a quarter maybe yeah the um, the, looking at that locker room there's 
probably about 10 people that actually shared a locker room with Terry Funk. Like, um, and the, and, uh, and everybody in that locker room shared a locker room with Bray, Bray Wyatt. Yeah. They, they had matches with him. They, they had lunch with him. They, they saw him every day that he was there. They, like, they, they worked with him. Right. Like, so it, it's kind of like your brother dying, and Terry Funk is kind of like the strange uncle that you never really met. Oh, yeah. Like, 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 <laughs> like e- everybody, know, yeah. everybody um, loved and respected Terry, but not everybody got to know who Terry Funk was. And Bray Wyatt, they knew who he was. I mean, they worked with him. It's, yeah, it's... Yeah. It's different, but I mean, at the same time, he was a respectable. Yeah, I've been getting them recently. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it with Terry Funk, they probably would have had the ten bell salute. That's, I mean, and then and the, uh, the but, whole like tribute package video. Or yeah, whatever. but I mean. Yeah, one uh, one somebody that was actually working with him passed, and so unexpectedly when, at, at seventy nine, when somebody dies, it's kind of expected. But at thirty six, oh yeah, no, you don't expect that. You, you never that expect that. Really. That and the fact that um, I, I believe this is how he passed. I'm not a hundred percent sure if it was uh, accurate because I looked up a long time ago or a while ago. Um, I believe he died from like a heart attack. Led from complica- complications from COVID yeah. earlier this year, um, but I mean, to that extent, um, my grandma and my friend Scott, my my boss, my friend, my coworker, you know, mm-hmm. um, they died in the same year. Um, yeah, my grandma, my grand, my grandma was sick. She had cancer going into it, it um, but. When Scott died, he went home and shoveled and had a heart attack. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, five years later, I'm still very affected by his death, but when my grandma died, I kind of was at peace with it. So, um, it, it's I, I probably like, the same way with Terry right. Funk. And, right. And, I feel like with that sense, too, you like, you, you down the line, there's no offense, but you like, you knew your grandma was dying. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then like, it just happened. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, was, that is the thing with Bray because like he had COVID the beginning of the year. Yeah. And, and then we, we saw him a couple of times already and he was fine. At, well, at least we thought he was fine. Um, like in, at, was he at this last WrestleMania where he did the, um, no, he, no, he wasn't. He was actually injured in, during the match, I believe. Okay. Uh, so like the, black black. we still saw him the pitch African American match. <laughs> we still saw him, um, wrestle a couple times this year. Yeah, and then next thing you know, just out of the blue, heart attack. Yeah, and it just it hurts more. It, it's it's. And um, this, I mean, this is coming from people that well, I've never met him. Yeah, personally, I've watched him wrestle on TV. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I've gone to a live show where he was at either. Mm-hmm. Um. And it hurts for us because as fans, yeah, like we didn't we didn't expect it. He's also one of the people that like kept you interested in wrestling. Um, going into that, it uh, I'm I, I um I was out of wrestling, and I th- I think after Kurt Angle left WWE, I kind of lost interest in it for a long time. I I got married in two thousand seven. I got. I was gonna say that was probably around 2006, 2007 that he left. I, I moved, moved to Arizona. I, I mean, I was doing. I had so much real life stuff going on that I kind of fell away from wrestling, and I at, at that point I didn't miss it. Right. Like, I, I would watch indie wrestling. I'd watch the Ring of Honors. I would watch um, whatever and catch an episode every once in a while, and never really caught my interest. Um, one day I was sitting around with with my um, old roommate Marion, and we were just flipping through channels. And we flipped through the channel, and um, we saw Bray Wyatt doing a promo. And I was just like, "Well, let's watch this for a second. And during that during that time, he was 
talking to the crowd about a teacher that he had that um, basically teared him down. And uh, that resonated with me. And I was, because I had a teacher that held me in from recess and basically told me that I wasn't going to make it anywhere in life. She used, used that word to a eight-year-old kid. Which, and, by the way, I started to interrupt, but what kind of a teacher does that to you? Yeah. It's, like, you're, you're supposed to be helping them, trying to guide them, and you're just like, you're not going to make it. Yeah, and it's, uh, I mean, it, it, it to me, it's really, really shitty. And um, Oh, yeah, <laughs> Like, for a third-grade teacher to s- say that. My brother teaches fourth grade. And every time I every time I went in to go visit that classroom, I just imagined myself looking at one of those kids and being like, "You're not going to do anything with your life," you, and and couldn't do that. No, like the kid could anger me, and it still to destroy him because like you're telling an eight year old he's not going to make it anywhere. How? And that's somebody with yeah. an authority telling you that. That that and also being said, like it's with, insane. With you getting that yourself happening to you. Yeah. Um, I feel like if you if you tried to, you couldn't because like you've been there. Yeah. And then like you couldn't think that I couldn't think that. That's no, not, it, that's it, not, that hasn't happened to me like that. But like I definitely could not be like, okay, all even, right. <laughs> even to this day, I think I I have lots of confidence issues. Yeah. Like, I I really do, and. I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with that moment in my life with that when that happened. But let's get back to Bray Wyatt. Well, well, you can talk about this some other point. But um, Bray Wyatt, during that interview, he said he ta- he Mentioned talked it. back to his teacher and like, and at that moment, it's like, wow, wow, I like this. And then the crowd went from hating him to cheering him by the end of that promo. Yeah, and for somebody to be able to do that, it's really cool. Um, and that actually brought me back to watching wrestling. Like, I had no interest in watching wrestling until I saw Bray Wyatt, and I was like, "Wow, this is what it's like." And it was Bray Wyatt really that was like that. <laughs> but I would tune in all the time to watch this. I would watch his matches and see the evolution into the the fa- the Wyatt family and watch the New Day. I got I got to see other things right, because, because of, Bray Wyatt brought me back. Yeah. That's like um for me I stopped watching wrestling around 2012, give or take. Mm-hmm. And because of that, I ended up probably what Ray helped me get back. Yeah. But what uh isn't gonna sound funny, what I start got me back into watching wrestling was deathmatch wrestling and I'm like, alright, this this shit's ridiculous. Yeah. Um yeah. let's see how far it can go. And then I timed in and I'm like, you know what? I've been watching this, it's got me back into watching wrestling. Let me check out WB again. Bray definitely kept me in there. Him and the entire Wire family, because I was a huge fan of Luke Harper or Brody Lee, mm-hmm. um, and seeing him in there, and I'm like, wait a minute, this guy's fucking familiar. Like, I see his shit uh, in uh, CCW slash Ring of Honor and Chikara. Yeah, and I'm just like, okay, it's like, hey, I know you. <laughs> it's just like that, and it helped too. I went to a Dragon Gate USA show, and Brody Lee was there. That was the first time I saw him, and he just. Clothesline the crap out of these, his, <laughs> these his, people. His discus clothesline, yeah, and then uh, works especially pulling it out in those tag team matches, mm-hmm. and then um, with uh, I think even with Bray doing it and Eric Rowan, um, phenomenal. He had the, in my opinion, probably the best discus clothesline. Sure, um, watching those connections made my head hurt. Well, that, yeah, but well, it, it hurt. Yeah. You you do, you don't want to like anybody swinging arms. Like, nope, I'm out. No, yeah. <laughs> as soon as you start like spinning around, you're like, nope, I'm done. And, and, but no offense to Natalia, when she did it, I'm just like, mm-hmm. that looks like shit. Yeah, like she did it so slow that I'm just like, yeah, that looks like you did not put any effort into it. And with 
Brody Lee slash Luke Harper doing it. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that that, that could that could take off someone's head. Yeah. Um, and then when they paired them three together, were just so captivate captivating. So mm-hmm. it's like this this is definitely keeping me interested. Yeah. Um. And it, and I'm just like, okay, let's keep going. And, and I, 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 to this day, I don't think I've watched a full episode of Raw and SmackDown. Yeah. Um, I just wasn't watching highlights. So I used to be a huge fan of NXT mm-hmm. when they had it on the network. Yeah, and, and, and then and then it became NXT 2.0, and and then it was on the USA. And then man had to stop watching that. Yeah. It it it, it, it just stopped doing good, but yeah. um. I mean, you you can see Bray Wyatt's influence in wrestling right oh, now. I 100%. mean, just look at Joe Gacy in NXT. Yeah, that that that, that I mean, whole um, I believe that's still a stable, isn't it? Yeah, Joe Gacy. Um, I can't remember who the heck's in it. Uh, the the, the world's the, great. No, no, what's the name? No, uh, grizzled young veterans and Grizzly. Ava, the rock star. The, yeah, <laughs> the rock star. The Whatever rock. her name is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, she she's in that, and I mean, I can't remember the name of that stable though. It's symbiotic, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah. Um, and that alone, holy crap! Joe Gacy, even before that, in the Indies, based his gimmick around Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Bray Wyatt, and Bray Wyatt got uh, got it from. Um, it, it was it, Dan Spivey had uh, came out as Whale and Mercy. Yeah. And then got brain cancer, so he had to stop. Doing that, um, but it it was it was loosely based off yeah. of that movie with Robert De Niro, um, um, uh, Fear or something, uh, Cape Fear, Cape Fear, yeah, um, um, like like Bray Wyatt, our, our Dan Spivey came up with that gimmick, and it was perfected by Ray Bray Wyatt. Yeah, because I know Bray even asked him for permission, mm-hmm. and. You could even, you could see the similarities. Oh yeah, just the way he talked, the the way he dressed, everything about that was perfect. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and it worked. Um, schism. Schism. Oh, schism. Yes. Schism. schism. Yes. Schism. Well, uh, for a second, I was like, "What, what is he just saying you? words?" No, I just, <laughs> he's, he's, he's trying to stay be in the podcast. And just, no, I, I looked up. The, I, know, I looked up uh, spinning reverse STO. That's the name. That's what. That's the. the that's the, that's name? the technical. Yeah. Sort of a wow. name. That's weird. Yeah, I looked up that too. I'm like, what exactly is Sister Abigail? That's a spinning reverse. Oh, wow, look at Cabbage. Actually, doing some research. Cabbage. Like I told him look to do him. in other podcasts that he never did. Yeah, spinning reverse uh, STO. <laughs> but yeah, that's good to know too because he he does have the best. Oh, yeah. dude, it's amazing. Um, I would not want to be on the receiving end. But of that. his character, like, that's why I didn't think at first. With him doing the fiend and Firefly Fun- Firefly Funhouse, I was so used to the uh, whole Will and Mercy style yeah. stuff here that I'm just like, ah, oh, this is gonna. No, nope, never mind. <laughs> 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 oh god! I will say one of my favorite things was when uh, when they the the when they would do their entrance as the Wyatt family, you'd see them on the screen and it'd be blacked out and they'd say, you know, we're here, whatever city, yeah, yeah. we're here. And then he'd blow the lantern blow it out. out, but walk out with the lantern on. Yeah, never understood that. I'm thinking it was magic. Not, it's magic. Uh, Nigel McGuinness was with the company for a while. Yeah. No, dude, yeah, it's no, it's no, it's no, voodoo, magic. man. They live in the so, swamp. It's some hoodoo voodoo mumbo jumbo. So, um, yeah, I mean, j- just that the ambiance that would come in there, like just watching that, and then everyone with their lights on. Yeah, the fire, the, fi- the, the fireflies. The fire I would literally yeah. get chills just watching that. It uh, yeah. was amazing. Uh, that. Gave me also um, reminiscence of family reunions. Yes, yeah, I can do uh, it. <laughs> the Undertaker. Yeah, he had the dark entrance. Yeah. he had the uh, and, and the slow, and then they, and then stoic they walk. Doing it whenever it got dark, and when they did those like um, uh, surprise returns, and they turned the lights off like the Sabu. So yeah, the, pretty much everybody in ECW when they made a surprise return, um, like with the Rock when he. Returned to host WrestleMania too. They did the same thing. Oh, they, with the lightning, yeah. Yeah, they killed the they, entire and you arena. See that, but like, it fit his gimmick. Not just not just fans just doing it when it's dark. It fit the gimmick. Yeah, absolutely. no, yeah, that, that was part of what made it all a uh, uh, tantalizing experience. Yeah, yeah. and ju- just even them walking down to the music that they walked at, like that was perfect music. Just 
I, just the chilling, slow. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what the fuck you would call that. Let, swamp music. <laughs> la, la, last night, last night, I, I was just sitting in bed watching videos of entrance, his entrances, and so, like, like his spookiest moments. They had that on, um, the, on Peacock for a while, for like at for the week after his death, and there was a lot of it was just him being. Ray Wyatt, oh, yeah. <laughs> like oh, him yeah. walking to the ring, <laughs> him or uh, the the kids going around the cage and singing to John oh, Cena. Oh God! And then that one part where uh, fucking where they did that, and then Cena goes to open the cage, and the the one kid's like standing in front of him, <laughs> yeah. and it has the whole world. It's like the, the deep, like edited uh, voice. That was straight up Poltergeist vibes for me. Oh, I'm yeah, like, absolutely. oh my God. God, that was great. And then um. <laughs> I just love the fans singing that too. Yeah, I mean, cheap it to him. And then I, I, I believe I showed you and Cabbage um, that video where Fozzie was doing a concert, and they just the yeah, and the crowd says yeah, singing and, and, and yeah. then like just do it. Yes, that was amazing. Yeah, did I don't even think Jericho did Jericho ever work with Bray? I don't even know. I want to say yeah, maybe they were in the same company for a bit. I don't remember them working a, a few matches or anything together. They they definitely could have because. When Jericho was in WWE, anytime somebody interested him, like he would do it. He would do it. Like he'd push for like, it. Like um, yeah, the, the guy from Chicago that he wanted to work with. Yeah. Um, he he actually came out of retirement to work with that guy. You mean CM Punk? I, I, I'm not saying his name. Okay, I, was, I, I, I don't, don't know why, but I really thought you meant somebody j- else. Just like <laughs> I won't say my third grade teacher's name because I won't give that demon credit. Credit. Joe Schmo. I, I won't from Chicago. I won't. <laughs> Phil. Yeah, <laughs> Phil. Phil yeah. from Chicago. <laughs> um, um, but I, I, because, cause, yeah, you're not supposed to say the demon's name because that, that gives them more power. Oh yeah. yeah, and I don't want to give them that power. So, um, like, like I know if somebody interested Jericho at all, he wouldn't want to work with him. So. Yeah. Um, and then I know Bray worked with a lot of people. I was at first confused with the Alexa Bliss part. Yeah, but it. Didn't it end up perfect? Yeah. It, 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 I touched they were going to pull it off where she was Sister Abigail. Uh, That's what everyone, I think, was expecting, because you'd see the silhouette yeah. uh, in the vignettes. You'd see the silhouette in the chair and then it rocking just back and forth. Thing over yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I always thought maybe they'd, they'd you know, find a way to The, the original Sister Abigail um, was supposed to be uh, Ivelisse from... from uh, Oh, I know. That, what you're about. And then they because she was in, she was in Tough Enough. Yeah, and that was around that time. Um, and then uh, after Tough Enough, she was on Indies and then Lucha Underground. And she she was she was still working with WWE and then developmental, and they were gonna have her. And then somebody was like, "Hey, make it Summer Rae." Because for some reason, that's a good idea. Yeah, because that's a great idea. I mean, she's. By the way, have you seen Summer Rae recently? Yeah, she's on. Red hair. Woo. I d- I didn't think that she'd look better with red hair, but it makes a <laughs> well, great difference. You're also kind of used to seeing her as a blonde. Yeah, absolutely. Um, she just looks like a generic blonde, but as a redhead, man. She also remind uh, that also reminded me of when she um that pairing her with Bray wouldn't make sense, but then again, neither did her with Fandango. No, didn't it, but nobody with it's Fandango like, made sense. They're like you're a woman with with Let's her. Dance. With her, they, they're, hey, let's give him the worst gimmick. You know, something that is just terrible. Like, we're going to make you a dancer. We're going to make you a coat, bride, or whatever she is. Sister Abigail. Summer Rae. Makes no sense. But, oh, God, no. But I, I'm glad they ended up going with her just being a mystical figure. Mm-hmm. Or else, a great one would have been Katrina from, from Lucha Underground, you know, the ghost of the arena. Oh yeah, because Katrina was um, played or played by well, played by fucking played by. Um, she was in WWE as yeah. Maxine. Maxine, yeah. Um, during the NXT uh, when it was but like she, a reality show, yeah, type of crap. And then she is the sister of Melina Perez. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Um, I was looking her up one time on what I saw on Lucha Underground. Oh, oh like, is, is it because familiar? is it because she had those leaks? I gotta look those up now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, no, I was confused because I'm like, she looks familiar as hell. 
Yeah. Like, I know I've seen her, and then I'm like, all right, she's Melina's sister. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, but like, uh, interesting. I was like, that would have been good too if they got Maxine, but I don't even think Maxine's in the wrestling business anymore. Or if she is, it's uh, nothing no, notable no. that we can think of. Um, but she was great for Lucha Underground too. Yeah, she she was amazing. But um, man, we're not who, talking about Maxine. Yes. Well, we'll talk about Lucha Underground later. All right, I think <laughs> we could probably do a podcast on that too. Oh, absolutely. Um, but oh, anyways, God, that match I watched. Oh. Anyways, um, with Bray, I've there's so much. He's definitely go. If they don't put him in the Hall of Fame. I mean, granted, it is WWE Hall of Fame. They're stupid and they put random ass people that don't make sense in it. The Snoop Dogg's in there. They needed somebody for the celebrity win because he he he's, yeah, okay. he's the third cousin of Sasha Banks. Let's let's talk. Oh, about shut that. up! They they have they have um all these people like they have Stacy Kleber and the Bella Twins in there. Miss Elizabeth and Victoria aren't in the Hall of Fame. Why wait, is wait, that? Wait, wait, wait. Mickey really? James is not in the Hall of Fame. I Why feel, is that? I feel like. Though there is, um, for quite some time, they did not put the Freebirds in there, and Michael Hayes was always bitching about it, and then he was getting shit about it. Uh, he, he was like, "Yeah, he would be, uh, I'm like Freebirds. That kind of makes sense if they were in there as as a whole." Yeah, um, I mean, but at the same time, they didn't work for WWE. No, but you know, I mean, people are in WWE or in the Hall of Fame that you never really saw. Yeah, exactly, like, like Abdullah the Butcher. I, that ironically, that was the person I was going to say. <laughs> um, Abdullah the Butcher. You had. Um, Fucking Carlito's dad. I can't remember his name. Carlos. Carlos Colon. Yeah. He never really. He maybe did one spot off thing with them. He yeah, I, I know. I think he was in a Royal Rumble at one yeah. point. So. And I think they put even uh, the original. Um, oh God, what's his name? Mil Mascaras? No. It was a. It was a guy known for lucha libre. Yeah, Mil Mascaras. Um, and yeah. the only thing I can remember of him was when he eliminated himself from the Royal yep. Rumble. Because he didn't want anybody to throw him over, so he dove out of the ring at some people and did a plancha. Which I'm like, I get it, but then it also makes you look stupid. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but like, I'm saying, if they don't put Bray in there, they're an idiot. They're, they're absolutely. He he's gonna. Be, uh, I'm willing to bet next WrestleMania Bray He'll Wyatt. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He definitely will be along in there, with but like, probably the rest of the Wyatt family too. When they start doing the I feel like, uh, yeah, introductions I feel like and they stuff, should um, as a whole. But but I think Bray's gonna go first, and then eventually the Wyatt family's gonna go in. Yeah, you think it'll start out as an individual, and then yeah. later on it'll be. Hmm, that being okay. said, do you I think they're gonna do like the double thing? Because they, they had Ric Flair in there twice. Because Ric Flair is himself, and then part of uh, yeah, the Four Horsemen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But with Brody Lee. Oh yeah. Do you, oh, oh, I don't yeah, think they'll. I don't think they'll put Brody Lee in there by himself. That's what I was gonna think because I'm like, I wonder if they're gonna do that. Yeah. Um. But there, that also being said, there's a lot of people that refuse to be put in the WWE Hall of Fame, and then they're like, you know what, All right. you've asked me for a long period of time. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. Um, I forgot who had said that they didn't want to be in it for like the long ass time. Me. I want her. Shut the. F- that no. No, that's his wife. His wife. Like, I I've read so much shit about that, and well, fuck, we'll talk about that later. But like, I was watching one of the um um. What the fuck is on Vice? What's the name of the show? Dark, Dark Side of the Ring, yeah. Um, and she mentioned something about that in there where she's like, I will never. I will never. They ask me all the time, I will never put him in there. Yeah. Um, Another fucking podcast episode. <laughs> uh, but yeah. And he should be 100%. I feel like he should be, um, what's that, the, the, the big name that they do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, um, where Ray Mysterio is that this year? Where, random as hell, because he's still wrestling. Yeah, I hate that. Like I got I, Ric Flair made sense. Shawn Michaels made sense. Undertaker made sense, which Undertaker, in my opinion, should have been four years ago. Um, Ed, Edge Edge made sense, but now he's but, back. But now he's back because well, he retired. He's gone. For, yeah, oh yeah, he left again. Um, is Christian in there too? Oh, no, Fane? No, I don't think so. No. Oh, I, for some reason I thought Christian was in there, or as like, he, or as a Edge Egg Christian or something. He did an introductory thing for Edge. Oh, that's, yeah. that's what probably what I'm thinking of. Yeah, um, he, he inducted him like the first time. But Braid yeah. is definitely going to be the number one, the big name for yeah the Hall of Fame. Yeah, he'll get he'll get the center spot when they do the whole lineup oh, at WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. He'll be in the 
or JoJo or whoever, they'll be in the middle. I, I feel like JoJo. No, I don't think it was JoJo. I feel like Bo is going to stand out there. Bo, or, I can no, see Bo I, or I Braun. See, I can see Braun doing it. I, I can see Braun doing it. I feel like even if they didn't get Braun to do it, yeah. I, oh, they I can see Bo. They should get um, no, Mike nor, Rotunda. Normally, they. I was going to say, yeah. isn't their dad still alive? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Mike. He was the one that called Triple H. Oh really? Yeah. That, yeah. Is that how Triple H literally tweeted it and said? That's how he found out. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I feel like those would be it. And if they don't do it, they're just fucking morons. That, that yeah, that's a that's a definite uh, waste. He's definitely worth Hall of Fame. Yeah. And just because I mentioned it early in this, um, Bray, we love you, but Terry Funk, rest in peace too. He was a legend of hardcore, hardcore icon for. He's in his fucking 50s with ECW. Jesus. Um, can't do a moonsault. But anyways, <laughs> still can't because he's dead. Um, Jeez, all right. <laughs> I apologize for that joke. All right, anyways. Um, thank you for everything, both of you guys. Bray, we love. We miss you. Peace. Wait, hold on. And bacon grease. Can I throw some in here quick? Yeah, go for it. Um, this, this is just the fact that he was only 36. Just people, this just goes to show. Any day, any time, you loved ones can so tell everybody you love. Tell them you love them. Call your mom. Call your parents. Call your kids, family, whatever. Make sure the people you love in your life, they know you love them. Because you never know when it can happen. That being said. Thank you, Kevin. That's very nice. Um, I got to look this up quick. Cause I, I, you saying the 36 part, that also just reminded me. I wanted to remember. I forgot how old Eddie was, and I was just thinking about this. He was thirty-eight. I was gonna say he was young yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to remember. Um, but both younger than me. So guys, this You're twenty-seven. Might be my last day. You just, just fall over. <laughs> Jesus. Wow, Walk. that's not funny. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Love you. Peace and bacon grease. <laughs>